Hey, hey, happy day in our county. You have to wear a mask when you go into a grocery store. So just the other day, my wife and I went shopping in a grocery store. We were there a couple of hours. Finally, I grabbed a wife and I said, I got to go home. I've had enough of this. The ADD's kicking in and we got home unmasked. It was somebody else's wife. Hey, stay alert, people. Now we got more virus stuff for you here. More than 20 million people are infected worldwide, and those are the people who have been tested, right? And out of them, close to a million people have actually died. So you know what? It's a big deal, but yet percentage-wise, it's a small deal. There's all kinds of different ways to... I don't know, come at this. I mean, originally the president and other people, including me, we kind of scoffed at it. We said, hey, there is a virus, but it's a little hoaxy with regard to the way it's being presented. And for the most part, I still believe that. Wearing masks everywhere, I mean, there's so much controversy on that. I think if you social distance and wash your hands and do all those kind of health conscious things, you're probably okay. This dumbing down of an entire world society, I mean, I think that's a bit of an overreach, but we'll get more into that in a minute. This whole show today, is about the virus, pretty much. The uh, Trudeau government, Trudeau's Canada, because that's what it is now. It's no longer just his government, it's his country. He owns it lock, stock, and barrel. He does everything he can to make it into his image, and it ain't a pretty picture. Just saying, you know, recently there's so many scams that, that the virus brings out in people. I mean, if you're kind of on that crooked side, the uh, immoral side, the unethical side. I mean, this gives you an opportunity to springboard into action. And that's what he does almost daily, hundreds and hundreds of zillions of dollars and go out the door, taxpayers' money, and this guy's incredible. He's buying votes with people's own money that he prints and he gets and he borrows and it's wild. The uh, case in point here now, the newest one, of course, is he's paying $84 million to a company that employs as a senior executive, the husband of his senior staff person. Okay, do you kind of think, and oh, and by the way, that didn't go out for bid. It was, it was appointed. You know why? It's because you're one of the chosen. We're the chosen folk. Don't you know? I mean, it's us against them, and we're the winners. These guys are dangerous. They're bad. Shouldn't be doing that in a time of crisis. $84 million. Oh, the other day I reported there was $130 million, I think, went out for a guy to build a factory. Didn't have a factory yet, and he's going to make mass or some silly thing. These are all friends of the Prime Minister of Canada. Bad, bad. You know what? Uh, then there's normal things <laughs> with regard to the uh, economic impact. And there's, there's so many things. But lipstick is kind of interesting. That just occurred to me the other day and I was looking at all these women. You can no longer tell if they're pretty or not. Ah, it's like we're a bunch of Muslims, right? We're all covered up. <laughs> just saying. Anyway, lipstick sales. I wondered about it. So I went and I did the duck, duck, go thing. Boom, 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 boom. And I found out or chop, boop, 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 tick, 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 you know. And, and uh, lipstick sales have collapsed. No kidding. However, nail polish sales have surged and eyeshadow sales have doubled. I mean, sheesh, I see. You know what? Things are happening. I mean, there's always good and all bad. The bad, though, does kind of come out more with the prime mistakes in Canada and so many other politicians and people who take advantage of situations. I mean, capitalism works. Free market works. All this other stuff. I mean, I am i don't know. I mean, here, for instance, is a story about the president recently had a press conference at his golf course in Bedminster, New Jersey, and he announced plans to sign some executive orders to cut payroll taxes. This is all about the virus. Extend enhanced unemployment benefits, suspend and student loan payments and interest and, and uh, continue the moratorium on rental evictions, require health insurance companies or providers to cover individuals with pre-existing conditions. And he had a long list. And there were dozens and dozens of onlookers there at this press conference, right? And so all of a sudden, of course, there's one little communist uh, reporter. And he says, hey, why aren't the onlookers practicing social distancing? You know, the whole crowd is in violation of New Jersey's rules regarding large gatherings. The president had a great comeback on that, and he did it quickly, without a lot of thinking needed, and this was kind of cute. He says, you're wrong, you're wrong, because it's a political activity, and it's also a peaceful protest. The crowd erupted in cheers because, you know, this is the same guy. He and all those other liberal media goofs that they uh, never ever said anything bad about the left-wing protests for failing to practice social distancing, much less vandalizing and robbing and stealing and breaking things. That was okay, setting fire to police cars and everything else. The media actually encouraged those gatherings, but when it comes to this type of an activity, they say it's against the law. They're against the law. 
Brr. Physical distancing and mask wearing could be in place for upwards to an additional three years from now. So says the uh, head doctor person, Tam, I think her last name is, in Canada. Don't make projections like that. I mean, that's just another part of the dumbing down process. While I get the virus, I get it, I get it, I get it. There's also this political overreach here, and she's causing more of that. We're all walking around like zombies, right? Because everybody's scared, and that's what you do. You dumb them down, you scare them to death. And, and she's part of that because, you know what? She's a resident of uh, Canada, I think. She's probably a Canadian citizen, but she's also, I think, a, a Chinese citizen. A whole bunch of communist stuff kind of merged into all this. It doesn't make it very nice, and I don't like it, but you know what? There is a history with virus. 17... I think it was 1770 or something, the plague came. It was a terrible thing in 1820, you had cholera. Uh, cholera, I'm not pronouncing that right, but hey, it's a grade eight again. You know what I mean. In 1920, you had the Spanish flu. I can say that would okay. In 2020, it seems now that history is repeating itself every hundred years or close to it. And then you have guys like uh, Nostradamus. And I actually get a kick out of him. I, I like his readings and different things. And it's always interesting to note someone's projections when you kind of can take the information after something has happened, after some event has happened, and roll it into kind of what he said. <laughs> and then say, see, I was not always quite accurate, but he does say this. He's saying there's going to be a virus, a plague that's uh, going to hit Italy and other places, going to transform the twilight of men uh, into death to destroy and ruin the world in 2020. That's what he says. So we'll see what happens in 2021. But 2020 is just about gone now. And while it's a terrible thing, you know what? It, it, it's um, in the whole scheme of things, it's not that bad. Percentage wise, it's, it's, it's not bad at all. I said the more people that they find they're infected. That just means that it's better because there's so many people that have it that, that, that um, when you find out, when you test them, the death rate actually drops. A friend of mine who's a doctor told me once, he said, if men, all men, live long enough, they will all die of prostate cancer. So if you haven't got it by the time you're 90 and you live till you're 95 and you still don't have it, hang on, keep living and you'll get it. That was his theory or fact. And, and the same thing here. You know, how many people actually will die of it? The percentage, again, comes down every time somebody is tested. You know, the um, liberal swimmer <laughs> in the U.S. of A. This would be in California where you, you got to wear a mask. So this liberal swimmer recently was spotted in the ocean. <laughs> you know what? Um, she won't be with us much longer. And maybe all liberals will take up swimming. Uh, Nasty, nasty. The biggest and most painful virus of all, the mother of all viruses, that would be bureaucrats, socialists. They're bad. They're a virus. Again, I'm not taking away from the actual disease. I get it. We have a disease. We have a virus. Let's get a vaccine and let's watch what we do. You know, educate, don't legislate. Educate, don't legislate. Oh, the man's got to stutter, but I mean it. We've got to say it more than twice so people get it. Let's keep our distance. Let's clean our hands. Blah, blah, blah. Let's do all the things we're supposed to do, but to walk around like zombies and end the world, I don't know. Look at South Dakota as, a, as an example. You know, the governor there is saying just what I said and what I've always said and, and the people there are living a good life. I mean, this business of closing everything and now it's finally happened. We're standing in line to get food. We're standing in line for this and that. And wow, this is like Poland of many years ago. Lastly, hey, the social distancing. How much longer will it last? My wife, she wants back in the house. Hey, ha ha, y'all come back here tomorrow. One more for you from the right. See ya.